Uh, Matt, are you still there? KK6 USY? Yeah, KK6 USY, Whiskey Fox 9 Fox. Man, you are blowing in here. You're about 20 over 590. Sounds fantastic. WS9F, back to you. Oh, that sounds good because I'm testing an antenna right now. I You guys might get just a little bit of noise, but let me show you what I'm cooking also while I'm building antennas. Oh yeah, look at that. Gotta cook some ribs. Hi guys, Chuck here, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures, and today we're gonna build an antenna. Now, the antenna we're gonna build today is something I found in the AWRL handbook for antennas, and it's called a ro rotatable inverted U dipole. What's interesting about today's antenna, it was designed by W4RNL, that's LB Sebic. not sure about that pronunciation, but we'll go with that. Um, what he did is he, he wanted to make a, a fill day dipole that was rotatable. Now you guys know if you get a dipole high enough, it will have a little more gain on the sides. Uh, and it will null out some of the other signals, or you can just turn it to where you null out other signals that you don't want to hear. The interesting thing about this antenna, though, is it does, uh, we're going to make one today that does 10 meters, which is the base antenna. It also do 15, 17, and 20. And the, how they do that is they hang wires from the sides, excuse me. So for like 20, it'll be double the size of the 10 meter, but they'll hang down. Now, the one problem with this antenna is you need to get it high enough first of all, to, to have that directionality and also so people don't touch it because the ends of the antenna are very dangerous for people to be touching, even at QRP uh, wattage. So like I said, this thing can be rotated and it's great for, uh, what it's really good for for field day and stuff is, you know, you got a lot of people out there, limited space. Well, it doesn't take up any more room than a 10 meter dipole. It's like eight side, about 16 feet, something like that, I think. Maybe 17, 16 to 17 feet. <laughs> now this antenna works really well with today's lightweight collapsible mass. I said disposable a minute ago. I don't know why I had to redo that. And uh, some are disposable, I guess. And when those are guyed up right and set up situated just right, you can get five to 10 pounds on them. I have no idea what that was. Now today's eye pole, there's different ways of making this. And the way I've chose to make it is on the cheap version. We're gonna make it out of electrical conduit, half inch, so it's gonna be a little heavy, and but it's an experiment to see how well it works, and hopefully this is gonna work well. But there are other ways of making this antenna with aluminum, and if you use three sizes of aluminum tubing, I think that's three quarter, half inch, and three eighths, I believe are the sizes, uh, you can actually make it collapse down to about three feet, so very easy to carry. Now, the other thing, uh, where I'm gonna use just regular old wire. I'll probably weight the ends with something that weighs a little bit so they hang a little straighter. Now, for his build, he was using lightweight aluminum fence wire. I think it's used for electric fencing. And I think the gauge was like 17, somewhere around there. I didn't get that. I just, I'm trying to keep this, I have lots of extra pieces of wire laying around. We're just gonna use that. Like I said, this is kind of an experiment to see how well it works. And we'll just, uh, later on, if we really like it, we'll make it out of aluminum. Now, if you want to get aluminum, uh, the box stores are really, really expensive. Uh, I, I paid, I think, $14 for two 10-foot sections of conduit. Uh, $14 for a four-foot piece of aluminum, and it wasn't even the size I wanted. But if you do want to buy aluminum, check out DX Engineering. The prices are pretty good, even with the shipping. It's usually oversized shipping because it's uh, three foot pieces or six foot pieces. I'd buy the six foot pieces because it's only like a dollar or so more. All right, let's get with this build. And I will say on this build, I'm probably gonna do a lot of the drilling and stuff. It, there's not a lot of drilling. So I'm, I wanna use the time well spent to do the testing on it. So let's get to the build. Okay, so here's all the parts we're gonna need, parts and tools. Uh, first of all, we're going to have conduit. This is not it, but uh, it's half inch conduit. I'm either going to use this board or a different board here for the actual center section to bolt the conduits to for one for each side. Um, we'll have a couple of these which are uh, to mount to the mast. 
I got tools here. This is a uh, it kind of removes the ridge when you cut uh, metal and stuff. Even it works good for plastic too, like for PVC. And just a little small file. A set of uh, ratchet sockets, a uh, pair of pliers, some bolts. Hopefully these are big enough or I'll have to make them big enough. This is a feed line, drill bits, some screwdrivers, a drill, and a hacksaw. Now this here I actually printed. I designed it and printed it myself because I could. You don't need that. That's going to be for the center. So when and this goes together like that, so there'll be one there and one on the other side. And this middle part will, is the separation. Okay. Now, if, if you don't have something like that, you don't need anything technically. But if you do put something, you could do it you, like this is a wooden dowel. And a wooden dowel will work also. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but this thing, you take it and you can take the edge, the inside edge of this pipe. And you just go in here and just run around the edge and it cleans that inside lip up a little bit, which is kind of important with this part. So it fits right and nice and tight. Okay, so that's all the parts. Let me drill some stuff out and start make, we'll start doing the build. Okay, so what I did here, I showed you guys before, but this is where it's put together. This is, this board here is two feet long, so a foot on each side. Now it doesn't need to be that big, but for this uh, conduit, it's a little bit heavier than aluminum, so I made it just a little bit bigger. So I have two U-bolts here. These are for the pole. And this pole, I'll put this in the uh, description below too if you're interested. It's an aluminum pole, it's a flag pole, basically. So you got your two bolts here for your negative and your positive. And then I went ahead and used a uh, U-bolt out here so I didn't have, you could, you could put screws in here if you want to, but I chose not to just so I don't have holes in it because I may use this for something else later, especially if I do make this out of aluminum. And I found something that I forgot I had, and I'll show that to you later, that actually might work really, really good. All right, let me move the camera and show you how we get the extra length for the higher bands. Hang on, let me get this for you. Okay, so what I did was I drilled a hole, and you can do this lots of different ways. This was just quick and easy. And uh, basically, I've got it loose right now. You take this and you put your wire on here, and then you tighten it down. And then your wire hangs, okay? So the, the wire is your extra length, and it goes down. And if it was windy, I would probably take in, uh, loop the end of it so that it had a little bit of weight and put a, like a weight on the end of it so it would hang straighter and uh, not blow it as much. You could actually take it and stake it to the ground. That kind of takes away from the, mo the moving, but you can move your spikes, you know, different places. That's just some ideas. Now the other thing you could do here also is you could, to make it quicker, is do like a power pole or a um, little piece of wire at the end here with a, some kind of a plug that you can plug wires in and out as you need them because you're making a wire for each band. So uh, now I was able to tune with just a 10 meter part. I could actually tune 12 with no problem at all with my 991A. So, you know, you could make it, you could make one for it, or you could just tune that since it's not, the wire wouldn't be very long anyhow to extend this. So you're probably not losing much there. But for like 20, 17, and this is 15, you probably want to add the wire. All right, guys. Okay, so let's see what we got here. We are at 27.2, and it's 1.1, or 1.2 right there it shows, and 50 ohms. If we go up to, let's see, 28.4, we are 2.2, which is usable, but I think we can get this better. So let's adjust this thing and see if we can get just, get it down a little bit more. All right, so right now at 28.7.8 almost, we're at 1.5, and at 28. Four or 1.3, 2800, 
So that's good enough for now. Okay, so with the added wire, we're on uh, 15 meter now. And this is 21026, it's 1 1.7. 1 1.5. And the beginning of the band is 21275 for a general. So 275 right there, 1.4. And then the end of the band is 21450. And we're 1.4 there. So 1.4 across the, pretty much the whole part of the band at the foam part. Now another thought I had for doing this, it was kind of like, uh, this might be really cool to do. Uh, especially if you wanted to use, say you were using aluminum to keep everything light. You know the, uh, air, the air connectors for your air hose where they click on and off? Why couldn't you attach that to your 10 meter and then to each of your radios coming down with aluminum or something like that, just attach it to that and just plug them in. <laughs> you know, make a little more solid that way. But I think the wire will work just fine as long as you put just a little bit of weight on it. And I'm pretty sure that's why Civic uses the, uh, the aluminum wire because it was stiff and it probably hung down and it's probably still moved, but probably not as easily as like I use a stranded wire. Now you could probably just use house wire also, like from your, uh, you know, just the way your house is wired or solid, like a solid core wire and get that nice and straight and hang it down. And that might work well also. Just some ideas. Uh, let me show you something else that I found cleaning. I was getting new internet. I was cleaning my uh, radio room and I found something that I think that might work pretty good if I redo this again. So let me catch, let me get that and show it to you guys. Now check these out. These are, uh, these are for putting up a tarp for holding the end of a, like a awning up. What's cool about them is they're, they're together like this. You just keep putting them out and it's got bungee cord inside. The only problem is this thing is, let me get all the way out there for you. So the only problem with these is they're only, they're about a foot short for 10 meter. So you could add a little piece of aluminum to it and make that work. It wouldn't be that hard. If you just leave it like they did here, you could actually pull the bungee cord one more, you know, one more foot or whatever it takes and add a piece to it. So not a big deal. So I'm, I'm just going to, this is AM, AM. We'll look at the SWR meter here to see how it looks. Oh, pretty doggone good guys. I like it. Awesome. Hey there, 73 Danny. I started to lose you there in that last transmission, but I think I copied that. K4KUS, this is Whiskey Fox 9 Fox and I'm clear. Uh, Kilo Kilo 6, Uniform Sierra Yankee. Uh, the, the other guy, uh, with the Whiskey 9, I think it was. Yeah, that's Whiskey Foxtrot 9 Foxtrot. Uh, his name's Matt. This is K4KUS. All yours, sir. All right, thank you. You had a good signal coming back there. Uh, pretty good that time. Uh, Matt, are you still there? KK6USY? Yeah, KK6USY, Whiskey Fox 9 Fox. Man, you are blowing in here. You're about 20 over 590. Sounds fantastic. WS9F, back to you. Oh, that sounds good because I'm testing an antenna right now. I found off of uh, the web from uh, Sebic. It's a inverted U rotatable dipole, and it's pointed pretty much uh, east and west right now, and I'm running 100 watts. Uh, that 100 watts is serving you well. It, it, you're, you're really loud. So I think, uh, you know, we still got the sunlight, so we still got the band. I started to lose Dan there uh, on the last transmission, although it sounded like you were hearing him pretty fine in, in your location. Uh, anyway, yeah, this, uh, Whiskey Fox 9 Fox here. Name here is Matt. I'm about 15 miles north of Denver Metro. Along the front range, uh, about a mile high. I'm a little bit higher than the downtown Denver, so I'm about 5,300 feet. Look at K5WSC from Texas. That was a pretty easy one. Give me a minus 11, I gave him a minus 4. Alright, we should have enough for PSK Reporter now. So we'll get a shot of that off the computer. Okay guys, this was a pretty fun project. It took me a couple days because I was working on it. I had a little side job I'm working on and uh, 
then it rained for a couple of days, so I didn't get back to it till today. But pretty cool little project. It could be really good for those days. Say at your uh, if you if you did like winter or uh, winter field day or just regular field day, it it would probably be a pretty good uh, antenna for uh, one person to be able to operate up and down. The higher you can get it, as most times, the better it's probably going to work. And and remember, if you're doing the longer bands like 20 and 17 where it hangs down farther make sure you get those things up you know at least 10 feet off the ground the radio is coming down so that nobody can touch those and get hurt you don't want anybody to get hurt while you're out having fun so if you did get something out of this please hit that like it helps the uh, helps youtube find people that want to see content like this and it helps the channel a lot the other thing if you're new here think about hitting that bell hit all that way you get all my future videos and I think you'll like it. I mean, I do some interesting stuff here and there, and I, I don't do, just do ham radio. I do some camping stuff and stuff like that. Matter of fact, I've got a really good video coming up pretty soon about something that will be great for winter field day uh, if it's cold. So you might want to see that. So 73 all, hope you had a great time, and uh, be safe. And hope to catch you guys on the airways. This is Chuck, KK6USY, for Ham Radio Adventures, 73 all.